Okay, so in this part of the series, we're going to be examining the Photoshop document of this design. Now, don't worry if you don't have the Photoshop document, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to be talking about the techniques that we'll be using to actually build this design when we translate this into code. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this and we'll take a look at each of the elements that we're going to be building and we'll see you know what kind of uh, markup we can use what kind of styles that we're going to use and we'll also talk about things like fonts and colors as well so the first thing that we're going to look at is the header uh, this part at the top here with the logo up here and also these menu items here with this button here now you can see that actually before we discuss any of that that you can see that there are these blue lines coming down the page here now what these represent is these represent columns in a grid system and we can tell if we just zoom out a little bit that this is a 12 column layout we've got 12 columns here so we know that we can use a grid system and we can go ahead and use 12 columns for this and this basically helps us space things out. So we know that things have to be specific widths, uh, or not specific widths, but specific ratio in, uh, well, specific positions in ratio to each other. So you can see here that all these uh, are all nicely lined up here. This is lined up with the edge of this here. This button is lined up with the edge here. Now we're not necessarily going to be focusing on that. We're going to be focusing more on the technical side of it. Uh, it's entirely up to you whether you build something to be you know absolutely uh, perfect to the design um, but personally I think that it's not necessarily required as long as it you know as long as it looks okay and, and it uh, and the codes fine then you should be okay but obviously this is an example of one in a million we're going to be talking more about the technical side of taking each of these elements and starting to build them into a page so we'll be building uh, this header here this here this here and this recent work section here so again, let's go back to the header here. You can see that we've got a um, a logo, if you like, and this is actually using a specific font. So later what we'll do is we'll come in with a text tool, we'll click on this, and it tells us um, th this font, particular font isn't actually available on my system. But from here, we can tell that we need this Pacifico regular. So we're going to go ahead and grab that uh, from Google Fonts or whatever. Uh, we'll probably be using Google Fonts and then go ahead and apply that to the page. So um, most of these fonts are available for free. There's one I think that isn't available for free and that's this one here. So we're going to just substitute in with the next best thing. It doesn't really matter too much. So um, the navigation is not tricky but slightly trickier. The logo is fairly easy. Uh, this whole top section will be just a, you know, a row of, of columns and we'll have a column to the left and the right. However, with these menu items, we're going to be using an unordered list here. And we'll have an unordered list with home, services, portfolio, blog, about, contact, and sign up as well. Despite the fact that this is slightly differently um, designed, we have this big button here, this sort of call to action to sign up. So we'll be including this in our entire list of unordered lists because from a markup point of view that makes sense you know this is part of the the top level navigation so we we want to still keep that inside of the markup we don't want to create a separate element here and go ahead and float that right or whatever um, another thing to mention is that you know how we're going to be styling these buttons well because we're going to be using the foundation framework which we'll look at uh, take a look at in the next video um, this includes uh, styles for things like buttons, but we're going to have to override some of them default styles. So the buttons like you see here isn't going to be a problem. Obviously with this little cursor, we're not going to include that on the design uh, because that's just a sort of uh, nicety. Okay, so down to this next section, we've got basically um, a one, two, three, four, five, six column um, section here so basically half of the width of the page with this image in so in this case all we're going to be doing is literally cutting this image up um, and saving it somewhere and then going ahead and um, you know popping it in as an image element or something like that so this will just be an image element um, we do have a slider here but we're not talking about JavaScript in this video we're just talking about the styling this so we're, we're gonna leave this out but this could be obviously included in, in a slider 
and this make things happen here um, now because we don't have the font you could go ahead and cut this out as an image but it would be a terrible uh, waste of uh, another HTTP request to download this so what we're going to do is we're just going to use the next best font that we can find and we'll just sort of guess things and you know see how it looks change some line height and see how things look here but this is just literally just going to be text um, you know as maybe a header or something like that um, it could be anything really but yeah that will basically just be in this side of the grid so that's that uh, here oh and also we've got this orange background as well and notice that the orange background comes outside of the grid so what we're going to have to do is create our own containers that fill the entire width of the page um, we're also going to have to do some sort of change some properties on the body to get rid of the default margins that you'd find uh, and then we'll have our grid or row start from here so this will all make sense later if it doesn't already okay so for the next part we've got these three elements here the first thing that sort of screams out of me when I uh, when I look at this is the fact that we need um, three four columns so four eight twelve that's a twelve column grid so we have four eight twelve and there's also images here as well so we can go ahead and cut these out and use these here and then we've got little headers here and then just a paragraph there so really this part isn't too tricky we don't need to go ahead and apply any container with any specific color here because it's just white we'll leave the default background of the page as white so really that's all for that one um, if we go ahead and scroll down again to this part uh, again we need a container here a, a sort of green container uh, that will fill the entire width of the page and then we have our normal grid in here you see how these elements stop at the edge here and on this side as well and um, for recent works and then this paragraph here we can just use another header and another paragraph for this we're going to use an unordered list and we'll give it a sort of generic class that allows it to look like this so this looks like it's a selected state so it's just a solid white background there and a green color for the text the normal text looks white and then for a hover effect noted by this sort of uh, cursor here you can see that we've got a um, you know just a white outline so again this is a similar deal to the header but it's gonna obviously work slightly differently okay so down to these items here you can see that we've got lots of images here so there's lots of cutting up of these images to do here what we're not going to do is cut up this entire bit here because that would be a massive waste all we're going to do is trans uh, create transparent items of these little images in here and the reason for that is that we can use CSS easily to create these containers and create the colors for them as well and what we'll be doing is creating a background hook so we'll have a background red a background uh, off white or white a background dark gray background yellow blue whatever um, and they'll just be applied to each of these containers now in terms of this being a grid this is perfect because we can have a four grid four grid and a four grid and that will add up to 12 and we'll get nice nice uh, um, spacing between here as well by default we'll add a margin down here to just separate this and that goes all the way down there and that's it really so we've got this um, you know these three sections uh, which is quite a lot of work to be done but basically um, most of it's taken up or most of it looks nice due to the colors here so that's pretty much it in terms of general things like uh, you know spacing between elements header, header um, styles um, we'll stick to the defaults where we can but for example what we're going to be doing is we're going to be calling this section here uh, without the header a feature and then we can go ahead and set that accordingly uh, we'll give a you know we'll use the nav the HTML5 nav element for this top part here and a header for the top part as well so we can come in and say you know that we want the header main or the or the navigation main to be this kind of style and the same for this as well we'll call this like features for example uh, plural and then we can go ahead and style the headers appropriately and the same for this as well we can call this recent this whole area here called this recent and style the header and the you know the font accordingly and uh, again we'll go ahead and add classes to these which give it the you know width and height it requires or the padding it requires and then we'll add the image in there same for this here 
So that's pretty much it. That's just taking an overall look at the design and how we might tackle each of the items. Um, what we're going to do next is look at Foundation, which is a CSS uh, front-end framework. And we'll look at installing this as well and how we're going to be using this to actually you know, start to build up our, uh, our design.